member of New Hope, representing Pastor Bishop Robert Watson. And today we're going to be coming out of Ephesians 4, 19 verses 19 to 24. But at this moment, I just want to take time in and just honor my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who made all things possible. So if you will, just bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we come before your humble dear God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ask your Lord, our God, to touch every heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Forgive us for our sins, Lord God, of omission and commission. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Keep me behind the cross and let thy will be done, Father. In the name of the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord God, let the Holy Spirit move like never before. Touch every heart, mind, soul around the world, Father God. Let them hear you and not me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Scripture reading is coming from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 19 to 24. Verse 19 reads, Who being past filling have given themselves over unto lascivious, to work all uncleanness with greediness. We but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have learned him, heard him, and have not, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and being renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. If I had to put a title on this message today, it would be called Real Men Change. Now I'll say that again. Real men change. If I'm a new man, then how can I still be living in that old man, that old state, that old mind frame? You may change your appearance, but your inner being has been transformed as well. My driving point today is going to be called I am a new man. We know that Apostle Paul is the author of this book, the date written between 60 and 64. It is written to the church of Ephesus. But the purpose of this book is to show Ephesians believers who are they, who they are in Christ and encourage them to walk accordingly. The theme we will see here is that the converted Jews in the early church tended to be exclusive attempted to separate themselves from Gentile believers. This situation in the church at Ephesians may have prompted Paul's letter to the Ephesian Christians. The unity of the, the church, especially between the Jews and the Gentiles, believers is the focus of this letter. The believers are the focus of this letter. The background history here is Ephesian unity of the church. Jews and Gentiles are in one God, Christ. Paul spent his entire teaching, his whole life teaching to the Gentiles that they would be Christians without becoming a part or an institution. This was very displeasing to the Jews generally, for they thought of the Masonic law as binding upon all, were bitterly prejudiced against uncircumcised Gentiles who presumed to call themselves disciples of the Jews, Messiah. While Paul taught Gentiles, Christians to stand like a rock. He didn't tell them to stand like sand. He didn't tell them to stand like plastic. He said stand as a rock. Amen. Amen. For their liberty is in Christ. As he did in the Galatians and Romans, yet he did not want them to be prejudiced against the Jews, fellow Christians, but to regard to them brothers in Christ. Tell somebody, I am a new man. I want you to hear me on this. <clears throat> this is a story I read in my devotion. Chris had his blood retested for years after his life saving. Bone marrow transplant. The donor marrow had provided what was needed to cure him. But left a surprise. The DNA in Chris' blood was that of the donors, not his own. What is he saying? The donor of the DNA was the blood transplant in Chris, not Chris blood. Well, what, is that? what I'm saying here is that when we become born again, 
The DNA that we have within us is no longer ours, but Jesus Christ. Because now we have become joint heirs of the kingdom of Christ. Amen. Amen. It makes sense, really. The goal of the procedure was to replace the weakened blood with the donor healthy blood. Before Christ, our blood was weak. We was weak. But when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become stronger. We become from ordinary to extraordinary. In Jesus Christ. Because having the power of the Holy Spirit will increase everything, getting us 10 times stronger, 20 times stronger, 30 times stronger, and so on and so forth. As you continue to get into the Word of Christ, as you continue to spend time with Christ, you will become stronger. Glory. So even though Chris' blood transplant was weak, but through his donor, he became strong. We was weak before Christ, but now that we are in Christ, we are stronger. Because of the DNA of our donor. Who is? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Get even swabs of Chris. Cheeks, lips, and tongue show the donor's DNA. Mm, 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 mm. The DNA that was in Chris showed the donor through his lips, through his tongue, and even through his DNA. So my question is now that we know the disciples walk with Christ to the point that we even begin to look like Christ. So with our DNA, can they see Christ? Can they see the love of God in us? Can they see the resemblance? Can they look at us and see Jesus? Do they see the DNA? Preach. Do they see the forgiveness of God? Preach. Do they see the love of God? Do they see the joy of God? Do they see the prayer life? Because they should if you have the DNA of Jesus Christ. In some ways he become someone else. Though he retained his own memories, outward appearance, and some of his original DNA. You know when you first get saved, you be so on fire for Christ. You want everybody to be saved. Chris wasn't himself. Chris began to look different. When I was in that world, I looked like the world. But when I came to Christ, people said, there's a glow about you. Hallelujah. We see something different in you. My dad told me one time, he said, boy, you walk different. He said, you talk different. Glory, glory. He saw Christ. On the outward appearance because Christ was in the heart. He was living inside. Hallelujah. Man look on the outward appearance, but God look at the heart. Glory. Changed off with the inside, then it worked itself on the outside. And we see Chris. Outward appearance look more like his original. Don't. Chris experience bears a striking resemblance of what happens in the life of a person. Who receives salvation in Jesus Christ. When you see your salvation in Jesus Christ. You will no longer be the old man. You will no longer act according to the old man. Yes it's a process. But even in the process. You are still being transformed. You are still being renewed. Amen. Amen. You are still becoming more like Jesus Christ. At the point of our spiritual transformation. When we trust in Jesus, we become a new creature, creation. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Paul led us to the church in Ephesians and encouraged them to reveal that inward transformation to put off the old self with his way of living and to put on the new self created to be like God and new righteousness, true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians four twenty two and twenty four to be set apart for Christ. Amen. So we have to be set apart. <coughs> Paul had to be set apart. We have to be set apart. Hallelujah. Question, who is your donor? Do you bear the image of your donor? Therefore, since I have received Jesus Christ and have accepted his salvation, 
there should be some resemblance due to his DNA. I am a new man. Glory, glory, glory. Verses 17 through 24, Paul testifies to the new life in Christ experienced by the Gentile Christian of his feast. 17 says, no longer walk or live as the Gentiles do. Paul no longer see the non-Jewish Christians as Gentiles. Therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Gentiles were called the uncircumcised, which was a Jewish term. It shows that one was a Gentile outside the covenant of the people of God. But now, since you are born again, we are the covenant of God. Glory. Glory. You have been circumcised through the DNA of your donor, who is Jesus Christ. You must no longer live as the Gentiles do. Because now you have bought, been bought into the people of God. Amen. You Amen. have been bought into the kingdom of God. Amen. You have been bought into the family of God. You have been born into the household of God. Hallelujah. Because of your DNA. Because of the new man you are. Because of the new spirit that's within you called the Holy Spirit. And have now become joint heirs in the kingdom of, and of the promise of God in heaven. Ephesians 1.14 says, Who is the grand guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possessions of it? To the praise of his glory. My conduct needs to change so it will be consistent with my new identity. I'm going to say that again. Come my conduct on. needs to be changed so it can be consistent with my new identity. If my conduct hasn't changed to match with my identity in Jesus Christ, something's wrong. Amen. Amen. Something is definitely Amen. wrong. Because my conduct should no longer be the world of living. If my identity is in Jesus Christ. So therefore I have to match my identity with my conduct. My conduct should be matching with my identity. Therefore I need to be delivered. Glory. Some things have to change in my life. Hallelujah. Some things have to change in your life. Some Glory. things have to change in our life. Our conduct can no longer stay the same. When the power of the Holy Spirit is moving in you. Abundantly. Hallelujah. In other words, I can no longer live by the Gentiles. I am no longer a Gentile because now I've been saved and born again and believe and confess the word of Jesus Christ into my heart. Hallelujah. John said you must be born again. Glory. Being empty minded or thinking in a state of vanity. Because as long as I have the mind of Christ, Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. My thought process should be the, of the things of God. If I have the mind of Christ, I be should think in holy things. I should have a kingdom mindset. Hallelujah. I should be thinking righteousness. Not corrupt, not negativity. Not division, but love. Honesty, loyalty. Hallelujah. Unity. My mind should be on the kingdom things of God. Because I have the mind of Christ. Because I am a new man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I am a new creature in Christ. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 18 of Ephesians says, they are also darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God. They are the ones that rejected the truth. Yes, I have rejected the truth one time. We all have rejected the truth one time because we all wasn't born into the heart, into the donor DNA of Jesus Christ. Amen. They are the ones that rejected the word of God. Yes, I have done that too. Because I didn't always have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I rejected the word of God. 
They are the ones that rejected the Son of God. Yes. I heard about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus for myself, so I rejected someone that I didn't know. How could I believe in a man that I couldn't see? How could I pray to someone that I couldn't see, so I rejected the Son of God, someone that died for me, for my sins. Hallelujah. Before the foundation of the world was created. They are the ones that rejected the spirit of God. God Almighty. How can we reject the spirit of Christ? I'm going to tell you why. Because we was darkened in our mind. Hallelujah. We didn't have no relationship with Jesus Christ. We didn't have no understanding of who Jesus Christ. We heard of it through our grandparents. Through tradition, but for ourselves, we didn't have no personal relationship. Because they feel as though they are enlightened to themselves. Hebrews 10, 32 says, remember the early days when after you had heard, been enlightened, you endure hard struggles with suffering. We think that we know everything because we come to a point of life when we feel like we're enlightened ourselves. We ain't done nothing. Amen. Just because we read a couple books, that don't mean nothing. Amen. Just because we watch a little history channel, that don't mean nothing. The Holy Spirit will give you direct revelation. The Holy Spirit will open your mind to things of a mystery. Have Hallelujah. anybody experienced that before? Glory, glory. Have God ever opened your mind to a point where you like, man, how, what is what is going on? But he allowed you to preach, see. Preach. He allowed you to see through the darkness. He opened your spiritual eyes so you could see what's going on. In other words, he gave you discernment. Mm. Hallelujah. He opened your darkened mind. Because you let the Christ of mind be in you. I have been there because I I'm just another brother that have been saved by grace. Hallelujah. I'm just another brother that's been saved by grace, but raised in the streets. But grace abounded much more. Hallelujah. My understanding was dark and without the DNA of my donor. See, I didn't have the DNA of my donor who is Jesus Christ in my life. So therefore my mind was darkened. My spirit was darkened. My heart was darkened. My life was dark. Glory. Because I didn't have the donor DNA. Who is Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. The more reason without the aid of divine revelation after missing the mark. Verse 19 of Ephesians says, Because without Christ, I was living how I wanted to live, practicing every kind of an impurity that I could. That's according to verse 19. Yes. I lived how I wanted to live. In other words, I did what I wanted to do. Could nobody else tell me different? Yes. Verse 20 says, I could not learn Christ that way. I heard about Christ, but I did not know Jesus Christ. I did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh. Tell somebody I am a new man. Hallelujah. J.R. Packer says, we must be clear in our minds that whatever further reason there may be why God exposes us to the joys and sorrows, fulfillments and frustrations, delights and disappointments, happiness and hurts that make up the emotional reality of our lives. All of these experiences are part of his curriculum for our reshaping and rebuilding and the moral likeness of Jesus Christ. Oh. That's why we have to go through so much. Yes. So we could be reshaping into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everything that happened to Joel just didn't happen. But it was molding him. Everything that Joseph went through just didn't happen. It was molding him and reshaping him. Sometimes Hallelujah. we go through so much hell in life, we wonder what is going on here. Preach. Hallelujah. But it's remolding us and shaping us. Change ain't easy. But real men do change. Hallelujah. How do you feel when someone said they love you, but yet talk down to you? Throw Preach. dirt in your name. Preach. 
look down on you. But yet they say they love Jesus Christ. Somebody better help me with this. Come on, come on. Before Paul came come to on. Christ, his name was Saul. Saul was a murderer that was empty handed. In other words, he didn't care because he had the wrong revelation. Ooh. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. We had the wrong revelation. Dark into the understanding because he had the mind of worldly living with no sense of direction. Saul was harming the people of God. He was killing the people of God. Yes. Because his mind was programmed to worldly living. Now think about all the years you've been in the streets. That thing just ain't going to unwind overnight. But by the grace of God, some have and some will. Glory. But for some, it's going to be a process. But when it begin to unwind, you're going to begin to see things different. You're going to begin to feel things different in your life. Glory. You're going to begin to love different. Yes. Because he did not have the renewing spirit of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I am. A new man. A new man. Hallelujah. I am. A new man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to love the Lord. Yes. You have to love the Lord. Though through baptism it shows that a person has died with Christ. And has risen to a new life. This does not mean that a Christian cannot sin. Or do not sin. Let's not get it twisted. So many people want to put. A shade over sin. Whether big or small. Sin is sin. We have to stop. Shading sin. And call it as it is. But that we acquire a new freedom. In Christ. Amen. We have a new freedom in I did it 26 and a half years. So my freedom in Christ, I know how it is now to be free. Physically as well as spiritually. Preach. Preach. Because I was bound for so long in life. But now that I'm free in Christ, it feels so good to be free. Hallelujah. So regardless of the Red Sea that was part of that I had to walk through, I had to go through hell because it was shaping. <laughs> it was molding. Change didn't come easy. We have been given the power to reject sin with the help of the Holy Spirit. The old self we put off, we don't need to put on that no more. We must know that we have put off that old simple custom. Hmm. Yes. I'm going to say that again. We must know that we have put off that old simple custom. Yes. Because if you don't, the devil will try you. Yes. That we receive from Adam the new self we put on. It's a transformed, transformed life that we have in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have to understand our DNA. Yes. We have to know who is our don't? We have to understand that our donor is Jesus Christ. In the beginning, I stated, if I'm a new man, then how can I still be living that old life, that old man, that old lifestyle? We don't need the DNA swabs or blood tests to show that the transforming power of Jesus is alive within us. The inward reality show should be evident in the way we engage with the world around us, revealing how we kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave us. Hallelujah. Real men change. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you for your divine grace and mercy. I pray, Lord God, that the power of the Holy Spirit will continue to move abundantly. Lord God, I give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.